so today we are going to attempt to do science. Now, I have been hit by a car, my boyfriend has been hit by a car, so he and I are both very interested in how to make cars safer. That's right, cars safer because they're the ones with the problem, not the bikes. They just happen to make it the bike's problem when they hit us and we break. So unfortunate. So today we are going to go and borrow a car that has those nifty sensors so you can like sense if somebody is close behind you or close in front of you. And theoretically they're supposed to help you keep you from hitting people. So we're going to see how close a bike has to be before those little sensors go off. Now one of the times my bike was hit, it was just sitting in a parking space. And my theory is that somebody whipped in there and because there were cars parked on either side of me, they didn't see my bike and they crunched my fender and shoved my bike up on the curb. So they uh, not only hit the bike, they moved it a good foot. And the bike stayed upright, but the kickstand totally out of whack, but the bike stayed upright. So that would be a good thing for a front sensor to tell us. Now, of course, if that person is not in the correct mental state, then I don't suppose the sensor is going to make a damn bit of difference. And my boyfriend was sitting at an exit of a parking lot and some lady in an SUV backed into him. Again, sensors may have been helpful in that scenario. The car we're using doesn't have side sensors. Do they even make side sensors? I don't know. But the car we're using only has front and back sensors. So we're gonna see just how close you have to be before the sensors get triggered. If it's too far away, then I'm sure people will promptly ignore those sensors and not pay attention to anything they say. And if they're too close, then it's not gonna do you any good because if you're moving with any kind of speed, you're still gonna hit because you're just too close. So I'm not entirely certain that sensors are really the answer, that they're going to help at all. I'd love for you guys to leave me your opinions if you think sensors would be helpful in cars, front, back, side, etc. Just the proximity sensors are the ones I'm talking about, you know. Is it good to know that you are close to somebody? Or is it something you would just ignore if it beeps incessantly, which apparently this car, it does beep incessantly. Or is it something that doesn't beep enough that you uh, don't have time to react to it? I'm curious, my truck is uh, <laughs> it's old and it doesn't have any of these fancy gizmos. It's still rocking a cassette player. So, yeah, I'm just kind of curious. Just kind of curious what you guys think. And now, on to the science experiment. All right, so this is the car that we are going to be using for our experiment here. It is a 2009 Hyundai Genesis. It has four sensors in the front and four sensors in the back. There are these teeny tiny little dots. I don't know if you guys can see them. They're like here. I don't know if the camera can get that angle, but teeny tiny little dots. Kind of two more centered and two further out on each fender, front and back. We are going to do four different approach vectors, I guess. Straight front, straight back, and then kind of an angled side front, side back as if you were merging into traffic, 
that would be the front side and the back side would be as if you were backing out of a parking space and onto a motorcycle. So <laughs> these are going to be the four directions we're going to test. I'm not going to do all eight sensors. I think that'd be a little bit of an overkill. And like I said, we're just looking for distance, how long until the sensors go off. We're going to have a camera set up inside the car to show both the backup camera and the sensor proximity sensors going off. And then we're also going to have the camera on my helmet to kind of show the distance. Alrighty, let's get started. Okay. So that's where it starts to go off. How much of me can you see in the camera? I can see your, your headlight and your front tire. Okay. Alright, so let's measure this distance here. Are you going to measure it? Yeah. Okay. okay. So like... The front most to the back most. I'll let you do all the measuring since you're so good at it. Yeah. I'm gonna go with like 29 inches. 29 inches? Mm -hmm. Okay. So almost two and a half feet. Okay. Alright, um, for the next one, I think. We'll have me, like, parked here and have you slowly come back at me. So you're going to be parked and have me actually back in Yeah. Okay, so... So that'll recreate what you what happened to you. Okay, yeah, so have the bike facing that way. Right, that's what I was going to do. Well, I want it to be, like, as if you're backing out to turn this way, uh -huh. you know? Yeah. So you'd be turning a little bit. Would you actually hit me? Okay, so do you want me to actually kind of turn a little bit as I back up? Yeah, kind of. Okay. And I'll go to where I'm just like, I'm gonna actually miss you a little bit. Okay. Okay. This takes guts. <laughs> this takes guts. <laughs> I have to trust you a lot right now. Alright. No, uh, no flooring it, right? Please do not floor it and hit my bike. Don't hit me, don't hit me, don't hit me, don't hit me. Yep, it's going off right here. Okay. So stop, stop, put it in park. Okay. And we'll measure this. Alright, Because if you had kept, if you had kept turning, you may have hit me still. You know, I may have like scraped alongside you. Yeah. Now when the bike's standing up, it's a lot further over. Well, do it when it's like this, so. Because I had, I wasn't standing the bike up. Okay. So 17 inches. Yeah, 17 inches. Seven, yeah. 17. 17. Okay. So that's a foot less than the last one. The front, I want me parked in a space and like you coming straight at me as if you were turning into the parking space. Okay. Because this is how I was hit. My bike was just sitting and somebody pulled in and crunched me. So if there were cars and spots on either side, and you were pulling in and couldn't see, at what point would you have time to react from just the sensors? Tell me if I'm going to hit. No, you're not going to hit. There it is. Okay. So park. Measure. Science. <laughs> that was making you nervous. Yeah, yeah, it is pretty close. Yeah. It's mad at me. And it is mad at you. Yeah. Poor car. It doesn't understand what's happening. Twenty inches. Twenty inches. All right. No, I'm saying like here I am. I'm tailgating a truck. There's the bike, and I'm like I don't see anybody because the truck is blocking my viewpoint. If I just whip over. 
at what point are the side sensors going to go off to tell me there's a bike there? Okay. Okay, right. Right here. Here. Yeah. Oh, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Right there. there we go. Wow. <laughs> hmm. That is not a lot of reaction time right there. It's a one foot. Yeah. All right. All right. So there we go. They seem to be better for backing into things. Like you're more likely to avoid backing into things. All right, guys. So that was our experiment. Um, we determined that there you have about a foot for which the sensors will go off in the front and about two feet in the back, as well as the camera for the backing up. Now, the sensor lights do apparently come on before the sounds go off. So, if you're paying attention to your dashboard, I suppose that could be helpful. The uh, reverse sensor one does not go off if you are in drive, it only goes off if you're in reverse, at least as far as we could determine with this particular car. But I hope you enjoyed our little experiment. I hope it kind of starts a conversation as to whether or not those sensors actually do any good. Again, if you're pulling into a parking space really fast and a bike is pulled far forward, you're not going to have hardly any reaction time. If you're backing up out of a space and a bike is sitting waiting to turn out of the parking lot again you're not going to have a whole lot of reaction time and these are scenarios where you can't see as well because if you have cars on either side of you they tend to block your field of vision so yeah pretty interesting I thought until next time ride safe My first time squitting. Oh, and I think it's on video. Maybe. <laughs> and it is friggin' cold! <laughs> oh my gosh, 50 degrees and t-shirts.